the that the 24 success was an influence to having Kiefer for this series for Rabbit Hole? That's so perfect for him. Well, you know, you know, obviously, 24 made Kiefer, uh, you know, more than a household name, made him, uh, you know, American hero, and uh, people trust him. And it, and to put him in a, in a in a role where he's uh, kind of playing with the audience's expectations and 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 has secret information and <laughs> uh, is constantly revealing new things, uh, and some of them are kind of dark, but you want the audience to stay with him. That's really vital to have that perception. You know, people love him, they want him in their living room, you know, and uh, they're going to go with him on the journey and try to figure it out. What's the average time it takes to shoot a scene where you have a mission? For example, the pilot, the one where you have like so many moving parts going on outside the hotel. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. It was a day, right? Yeah, yeah, it's like a day. Uh, you know, it's it's. Uh, it shouldn't have been. It should have been longer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's uh, it's funny about uh, a show like this. We'll spend, we'll kill ourselves to get like three seconds of screen time, and then and then we'll shoot five pages of dialogue the next day. And and uh, you know, it's just the way it works in TV. Uh, you know, there's so there's so much coverage. You know, in this show, and it's really not TV. Uh, is not conducive to lots of coverage. So it was. It was a, a lot of just, you know, right. move, move, move. We got to move, I mean, move, move, you know. Like the horse sequence, the Times Square sequence, we shot that in a day. Uh, and you pick up little pieces, like the insides of the cars and the things like that. You do, you do piecemeal along the way. Yeah. But we were sort of shooting a few episodes at once at, at all times. Yeah, we, I mean, we, we directed half the season, which was nice. So we were able to, if we were got into the editing room and we were like, oh, boy. <laughs> we can go. We can go get that shot while we're shooting something else. Like, okay, we're gonna. We have to move the, the camera. So let's go over here and grab this little piece of that. And and I don't know if we would have been able to pull this show off if it wasn't if we didn't direct it, most of it. Well, you had us in suspense. <laughs> James with the Down and Nerdy podcast. Well, like she said, I'm James in the Down and Nerdy podcast. Gen gentlemen, how you doing? Good. Hey, good. Doing? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you guys as well. So this, this show is so incredible. It has so many moving parts, especially with what Weird does for a living and all of the things going on. How do you put a story like this together and keep it making sense as you're going? Because there's so many moving parts here and just keeping this linear story moving. Lots of cocaine. <laughs> uh, no, uh, it, it, it's a you know as as writers, it's a, it's a fun exercise to be able to plan something out. We were, we were very lucky with uh, Paramount that the uh, uh, gave us a whole series order so we could work out the whole season in great detail and write all the episodes before we started rolling because it is a, a a Jenga of massive proportions that uh, you, you have to work it out because you don't want the audience to be pissed off at the end. You know? Well, and also at the end of episode eight, you want them to be satisfied. You want like it, that we weren't just doing twists and turns for twists and turns sake, that these were all like meaningful story elements are character elements that pay off in the final two episodes. So, yeah, it was like it, we we were lucky to get all, all eight of them written before we started shooting. Perfect. Thank you. Hi, guys. Derek Thomas, uh, Monday Morning Critic Podcast. Um, so just looking at your body of work, Bad Santa, truly one of the last great, you know, written comedies uh, um, probably ever made. And then we're looking at this wonderful show, The Rabbit Hole, which keeps you guessing the entire time. Which one of those, like, do you feel that pr provides more or presents more of a um, difficulty for you when, co when it comes to writing? Because I look at Rabbit Hole, it's always, ha it always evolving. It's, it, you know, people are, it, it makes you second guess constantly. Um, comparing those two types of project for both of you, I suppose, which do you view as tougher or do they present different challenges in their own right? Uh, comedy, is hard. comedy is hard in that we have to sit across from each other and we share a computer and two screens and we have to make each other laugh. And and that's diff that's that's very difficult. Uh, but this show was just figuring out the story the whole season because we worked whole, uh, the whole season. We would outline the whole season, then we sh wrote the whole season. Once we figured that out, the writing itself was fairly enjoyable because you knew because you knew that you, you you have no bandwidth with these story elements because you have to stick in your channel. You, you know, there's no like going off on a on a, on a wing and a prayer and having some creative idea, you have to 
do this, you know, because if we if you don't do the whole thing, the whole puzzle falls apart, and that's for the whole season. So writing was actually a, a, once we were done with the outlines, I think the writing was a, was kind of a pleasure, you know, just adding f flavor and color to the to the to the scene descriptions and stuff like that. Thank you. All right, our next question goes to Jamie. Hi, Jamie Ruby, Sci-Fi Vision. Thanks for talking to us. Hi. So can you talk about where the idea originally came from? I mean, how did you come up with this script? Uh, a lot of it just out of the, the headlines, really. I mean, we're, you know, we, we, we couldn't help but notice uh, the echoes of uh, the sort of uh, Watergate era uh, uh, movies, uh, you know, post-Watergate, uh, you know, that we're in this same place where we kind of don't trust don't trust the media, don't trust the government, don't trust what, you know, whatever. Uh, and there's a lot of conspiracy theories afoot. And, uh, and they, we seem to have recovered from that for a long time. And then when social media came along, we, we, we find ourselves right back there. And that's kind of where it all started. You know, we wanted to sort of uh, explore how things like that can happen. Okay, great. Well, thank you. I'm enjoying it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jamie. Next question goes to Jim. What's up, guys? Jim Alexander with Real Talker. I don't know if you guys have any like secret documents on uh, Paramount and CBS or some kind of intel to give you such high production value on this show. <laughs> it's it's got a storyline of a show for sure, but it feels like you're watching a movie with oh. the production value, the look, the explosions. Like it's very high quality. So I'm like, I don't know how you guys got this uh, figured into the contract, but it looks great in that aspect. Was it supposed to feel sort of like a movie, but in a TV show form? Because that's at least the vibe I got from it. We were that was, we were determined to make it look like a movie, and it was a struggle every day because people, <laughs> people, people are like people who work in TV are like uh, hey, it could all be so much easier <laughs> if we didn't have to like move the camera so much and do it. So we really struggled. We really pushed you know that movie look because we were, we wanted it to be fun and fast paced and entertaining like a movie is you know because that's that's what these that's what these movies that we loved and have such passion for were like. Nailed it. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Back up to James. So one of the things you guys do in this story is you utilize flashbacks to, to help tell more weird story. And sometimes viewers can tend to, you know, not like flashbacks when you when they take them out of the main story and you're going back a little bit. So how vital are these flashback scenes to the overall story, especially when it comes to Weir's character? Well, you know, it's funny. I was just thinking about this uh, a few minutes ago. You know, it occurred to me that the flashbacks are some of the... Th Things in uh, in the show, one of the few things in the show that is absolutely what it what it seems. You're not it's not you're not being lied to. You're not being there's nothing coy about them, and and so you're learning the real truth about this character who is very mysterious, and I think they're they're valuable in that regard. They're also valuable in the way uh, they were sort of used in in This Is Us, which is, you know, by 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 just giving you something about the person's past. And to see how it influences their present, uh, it's just a really good tool. And I think uh, I think audiences are really good with it now. I mean, I I, I think it's it's a pretty common thing now. You, maybe not so much uh, ten years ago. But. Well, it definitely worked in this story. Thank oh, you. Thanks. Hey, thanks, guys. Make your way out.